Are you overwhelmed by the challenge of personalizing communication for thousands of students? That's where Element 451's AI assistants come in. From nudging prospective students to guiding those already on their journey, AI assistants don't just automate. They write, build, and optimize every step of your digital campaigns. Discover how at element451.com slash AI team. Welcome to Talking Tactics, a podcast that gets you results. Each episode features a single tactic implemented with limited resources that moved the needle in enrollment in some way. I'm your host, Day Kibbils, Strategy Director at Ology, a marketing and branding agency for education. Join me every other week for discussions with some of the most clever folks in admissions and enrollment marketing, doing the work day to day, just like you. Talking Tactics is a part of the Enrollify Network, a robust collection of podcasts designed to help higher education professionals like you grow. Explore our other shows at enrollify.org or check out some of my personal favorites. Link in the show notes below. Enrollify is made possible by Element 451, the leading AI-powered, all-in-one student engagement platform, helping institutions create meaningful, personalized, and engaging interactions with students. Check them out at element451.com. Hello, listener friends. How is it going? Welcome back to Talking Tactics. I am your host, Day Kibbilds, and today's episode is probably the most adorable we have ever had. We're going to learn how Miami University's toddler campus tour reel saw 33% more engagement than other admissions content on their main channels. Plus, it won a Gold Case Circle of Excellence Award. And here to tell us all about it is Garrett Harder, Associate Director of Social Media at Miami University in Oxford, Ohio. Garrett has five years of experience leading organic social media strategy in higher ed. And perhaps most importantly for this episode, he's the proud father of Wesley, the two and a half year old star of today's episode. Welcome to the show, Garrett. Hello. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. Of course. I mean, I couldn't resist, frankly. I I found this tactic scrolling on LinkedIn, as I do, and I saw this like extremely adorable post of this extremely adorable toddler. I'm like, I got to have it. Like, You got to talk to me about this. So yeah. here you are talking to me about it. Yes. Uh, tell me, where, like, where did this idea even come from? How did it occur to you that you needed to have a campus reel featuring your toddler? So our digital team at Miami is constantly brainstorming for ways that we can improve our content Mm -hmm. because we really want to be at the forefront of social media marketing, like in higher education. And in one of our brainstorming sessions last year, we were talking through campus visits and how we could showcase them differently Mm -hmm. than what we traditionally see from a lot of universities. And being the father of a two and a half year old, I thought it would be really engaging to add some sort of adorable element to (laughs) a campus visit. And I hadn't seen that done before. Um, So we know that about our audience at Miami is Mm -hmm. they love cute kids, they love dogs, and they love campus beauty. Mm -hmm. And those are some of the things that we see high performing on our channel. Mm -hmm. And so by taking this toddler, my son, uh, and placing him into a campus visit, I knew that we would kind of get this like totally different view of what a campus visit looks like. Mm -hmm. So I I love, obviously, I love this on so many fronts, uh, but everybody knows, right, in the enrollment space that featuring campus is super important. Mm -hmm. Social is one of the best places to do that. Uh, Did you have any sense even before you did this, other than people like adorable things, like who is your audience on this channel? Who, Who typically would engage? Were you trying to reach a different audience? Or were you just trying to up the adorable factor? Yeah, so we know that on Instagram specifically, where this was posted, Mm -hmm. uh, we see prospective and current students engaging Mm -hmm. the most. And we do have some young alumni that are engaging with us on that platform. And so we can kind of see over time with the posts that we are making on the channel Mm -hmm. that when we are doing something creative like this, 
we will see a spike in engagement, whether that is people commenting, oh, this is so cute, or sharing it to their story, like, look what my what, what Miami is doing right now. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so seeing that, like, I, I wanted to see those comments come in. I wanted to see people share this content. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it worked, too. So in terms of when you did this brainstorm, the idea came up, um, how, how did you actually start putting it together? Did you create like a script or a flow or what were kind of your goals with, with the real and the ideation phase? Yeah. So I sat down and I started to map out some of the things that I knew that I wanted to incorporate in this video. Uh, so some of those things included our headshot booth in our career center. And oh, we yeah. had previously seen um, really good engagement with our headshot booth because we had a post go somewhat viral on LinkedIn uh, regarding our headshot booth. So I knew I wanted to incorporate that, mm-hmm. take advantage of that moment. And then the robots across campus, which a lot of our students had been posting about. So because they were already talking about it, I knew that I wanted to incorporate that into the campus mm-hmm. visit. And they're across campus like crazy. So I knew that we were running into them. And then also an in in classroom moment. Okay, I wanted yeah. to see what Wesley would look like sitting next oh to my these God. other college students. It was the cutest thing. Yeah. I, it's Folks, you obviously are listening to Gary talk about this, but you probably haven't seen the reel yet. It'll be linked in the show notes, but it is as adorable as you imagine. It 100% is. <laughs> So with this shot list, how, how did it? How did you do it? Did did you have special equipment? How did you get your star to to actually play ball that day? So that actually kind of takes me a little bit into my biggest challenge that day was the fact that I was working with a two and a half year old. <laughs> um, so that and, and parents listening will probably understand that toddlers are often unpredictable. Um, I was really just hoping that that day that he would be in a good mood and we would be able to do this video. You can kind of see in the headshot portion of this video that he almost had a meltdown. Luckily though, he did a really great job and the day was pretty smooth and I had lots of snacks. The snacks are key. Anyone who is a parent knows that, but they're also, you know, I think about this a lot as adults. We feel the same need for snacks, but you know, we don't have meltdowns, but we get, we, we get into a bad mood. Like oh, this, yeah. we, we, we can get the same, we have this exact same physiological reactions, but we've just learned to kind of mask them better. So snacks yep. are key. Snacks are for key. sure. Uh, okay. So how did you decide so the day that you were actually doing it? Is there, if someone wants to replicate something like this, can you talk us through how did it work? How long did it take you? Were you walking around with your iPhone? Um, that kind of thing. With how much editing was there? I know that the video has a voiceover. Was that you? Like, walk us through how you actually made this thing happen. Hi, Day here. Element 451 is hosting the AI Engage Summit on October 29th and 30th. This free virtual event features many of your favorite Enrollify creators and will explore AI's impact on student engagement, enrollment marketing, and institutional success. Learn to tap into AI to automate personalized outreach, improve your emails, streamline content creation, and boost campaign performance. Plus, hear directly from our current students on how AI is influencing their engagement and campus life. Don't miss my session, Mastering Email with AI, where my co-author Ashley Budd and I will show you how to use AI to help you with your subject lines, content, and CTAs. Plus, for the first time ever, We'll give attendees access to an exclusive custom GPT based on the principles in our book, Mailed It, a guide to crafting emails that build relationships and get results. The AI Engage Summit is your guide to understanding and applying AI at your school. Registration is free. Visit element451.com to save your spot. And now back to the show. The day that this was being filmed wasn't originally supposed to be the day that it was filmed. (laughs) So, and what I'll go with that is I uh, found out that morning that I did not have childcare. My childcare had fallen through. Mm. And so I had already knew that I was wanting to film this video. Yeah. And so I took this opportunity to bring my son to work with me. And so everything, because it had already been like pre-planned was already laid out. I knew what I had to 
had to do. And I have camera equipment for our team. And so I use the camera equipment because I also, and you could see in part of the video, like Wesley's holding my phone. So like he's, he's using that as a prop in uh, parts of the video, but I was using my camera equipment and we were going to these places on campus that I had planned for. And I would just film vertical clips of him. And I filmed more than what you obviously see in the video. And I just kind of pulled afterwards, like what I thought were the best clips. Um, but we just bounced around campus from one thing to the next. And what I had on my shot list, we just started moving through. And as we were walking to the next place, I made sure to film him walking just to get some B-roll that we could add to the video as well. The voiceover was me. And because I, um, at the time, did not want people to hear my voice, I added that filter that you kind of see on TikTok yeah. and Instagram a lot. Um, but I basically watched the video over, uh, many times to decide like, what do I really want to say based on what I shot that day? Yeah. And, uh, for folks, again, I really want you to go into the show notes and watch this, but if you have ever gotten content on your Instagram or TikTok of adorable toddler speaking in the super fast kind of warped little voice that's exactly the vibe with this one it's yep. <laughs> it's so good it's so good my favorite part I have to say is uh, I think you all were walking from one place to another and there's a part on your campus people can't step on right yes yes and you pulled him and you can tell like he was direct uh, guided away from this terrible life mistake right <laughs> yes that is part of our Miami tradition is you do not step on the seal yeah. And so I wanted, I definitely wanted to incorporate that. And the best way I knew how to was having him walk towards it. And I was going to, I was going to yank him over so that he did not step on that seal. I think it really shows the personality of the campus in a really interesting way. Like when you and I were talking about this before today, I think you said something that was, that really resonated with me about this reel and, and about campus tours in general. Like what would that experience of being on campus be like if you're only looking at the fun parts? Mm -hmm. If it's the food and the cool stuff and the music and and forget the admission script, you know? Yeah. Like what is that perspective of just enjoying the campus of someone that's discovering it for the first time and anyone who is around children or is a parent themselves, like the way that kids discover the world around us, it's so fresh and it's so new. 100%. So interesting. And like, I have a six year old, and I like every time he learns something or sees something, like, I feel the joy of it, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's so smart to like present it from his perspective because you even make fun of things that, you know, are silly that mm -hmm. we as adults don't make fun of anymore. Or I don't know. I, it's so, such a fresh point of view for, for a campus experience. So. And that, that kind of came up a little bit like in our brainstorming process of that comparison of a two-year-old, a toddler, to that of a prospective student, mm -hmm. where obviously we know that toddlers don't have a whole lot of worries. They just want to eat, sleep, and have fun. Yeah. And while a prospective college student is making one of the more important decisions in their life, I will say based on previous experience that some of my priorities going into college was where am I eating? Uh, you sleep and how, have fun. how much sleep am I going <laughs> to get and how much fun am I going to have? <laughs> Absolutely. So like we're rescuing those kind of really fun parts of it in yes. like such a, I don't know, unforced way. It's so good. So you already talked about some of the challenges being really just having Wesley around uh, and trying to keep him entertained through all this. Were there any other challenges uh, in particular, maybe thinking about something a lot of higher ed folks face, which is stakeholder approvals mm -hmm. or anything like that that came up for you? Um, I will say that I know that is a common challenge for a lot of people, but when it came to convincing leadership of this, um, I didn't struggle a whole lot because they are very, very supportive of mm -hmm. the crazy ideas that I have. And I, and I have a lot of them <laughs> and they put a lot of trust in our team to run with these crazy ideas. And they really just want us to make sure that we keep them updated on the results. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm sure that they were super happy that we also didn't have to spend like any money for this. 
Yeah, I mean, who's not, right? Uh, you call them crazy ideas. I call them award-winning tactics. Yes, I love that better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so talk to us about those results then. Uh, it was fun to make. It's adorable. Uh, mm -hmm. What we talked about, I already shared a bit of the engagement metrics. Tell us the specifics there. So what did you all see after it was posted? Yeah, so this was posted around the end of November last year. Mm -hmm. And for that month, we were averaging around 40,000 views on our video content. And this video got almost 100,000 views. So wow. more than double, which was incredible for us. And when we were looking at some of our impressions, like the, the previous two weeks, our impressions were sitting at like 34,000 for mm -hmm. those posts on Instagram. And this video um, got up to 103,000 impressions. Wow. So it, it was really cool to see those metrics and mm -hmm. also being like one of the, it's the second or third highest performing post that month for us. And we got tons of really great messages from our campus partners, basically yeah. saying like, we love this. Like we shared it when uh, it was such a great video. Yeah. And like, that's what you want, right? You want campus partners to be excited and share. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I think about this type of content, which are not exactly results that you can measure probably, maybe not yet, is, you know, I think about presenting your campus from the perspective of a toddler and how that might make a parent feel, like a, right. a parent, a student parent, like a, a student who is maybe non-traditional, who has children themselves, like how welcoming is that, right? Like there's mm -hmm. a, there's a toddler on this campus. My toddler yeah. could be on this campus and I like it from that perspective. But I also a little bit like it from an employer brand perspective, like the, the fact that you were able to do this on a day because you didn't have childcare and that it was supported and encouraged and celebrated. That's amazing. Yep. Like, I yes. love that. I love what that says about your work environment, you know? Yeah. And that, that is something that it's honestly one of my favorite things about working at Miami is um, like... Our, our VP is so family oriented yeah. and that makes me feel super good about working for this place. And so being able to like take this day where I didn't have childcare and create content with my son that then put Miami's name out there, especially winning the case award. We put ourselves in front of so many more new people because we won that award. And yeah. so taking these opportunities to be able to do that is just so special to me. Yeah, no, it's truly incredible, commendable, great idea, uh, amazing all around. Um, so you did win the award, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And it's gold in its category. So, it, I mean, how cool is that? Does Wesley know that he's an award-winning superstar? So I have, I've told him that, hey, this video we made, and I keep showing him the video, like, it's it's got this big award. And obviously he doesn't... <laughs> uh, really care, but I'm excited for when we get that plaque. I'm going to make a copy and I'm going to hang in my office and oh, keep absolutely. that with honor. Absolutely, like also take a, a make a copy and put it in his room. I mean, yeah, this he is gets his to have first... one in his room. Yeah. Um, is there going to be more Wesley content in the future? I'm sure the fans want to know. I hope so. <laughs> we, have, we have a lot of crazy ideas and <laughs> award winning, so, award winning, award, award winning ideas that we have. <laughs> Uh, coming. So I'm excited for what the future looks like. If anyone wants to try this themselves, is there any like advice you want to give them? Um, one of the things that I think that people just need to know is you need to try things. Mm -hmm. Like no matter how far out an idea seems, like you won't see results like if you're not posting anything. Mm -hmm. So go and try to try these ideas. Like if it fails, you're going to learn from it. You you will learn uh, whether this does good or bad um, and you can grow from that. But I am always encouraging people, especially like the people on our team, we are, we're always trying new things. We're testing uh, whether something could work or not. And um, no matter how far out that idea seems, I would say try it and learn from it. Yeah, that's great advice. Thank you so much, Garrett, for coming on the show to talk about this award-winning tactic and real yeah, thank you so much uh well uh, folks listening please check the show notes for this reel i'm going to link right to it uh, you have to watch it it's so adorable and uh you really don't want to miss it be inspired by it be inspired by the joy that it shows and that's exactly how we should be presenting our campus to students mm -hmm. um garrett if people want to contact you where can they find you 
Well, working in social, I have every social media platform out there, but uh, <laughs> you can you can check me out on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the one, right? LinkedIn is the for like it's the business card, the business yes. card one. <laughs> Um, All right, folks. Well, that's the end of our episode today. To our listeners out there, follow and subscribe to keep walking the walk and talking the tactics. The Talking Tactics Podcast is part of the Enrollify Podcast Network. If you like this podcast, chances are you'll like other Enrollify shows too. Our podcast network is growing by the month, and we've got a plethora of marketing, enrollment, and higher ed technology shows that are jam-packed with stories, ideas, and frameworks, all designed to empower you to be a better higher ed professional. Our shows help higher ed marketers and admissions pros find their next big idea and feature a selection of the industry's bests as your hosts, like Jamie Hunt, Allison Tercio, Jenny Lee Fowler, Jeremy Tears, and so many of your other favorite leaders in higher ed too. And Rollify is made possible by Element 451, the leading AI-powered, all-in-one student engagement platform, helping institutions create meaningful, personalized, and engaging interactions with students. Check them out at element451.com.